Hey gang, here I am, sat in the office at work, and I bought in a classic today. It's called Grump and the Hairy Mammoth. I was thinking about the Year 3s and their work on Stone Age, but everyone will enjoy this book. Lots of funny stories about a grumpy caveman and his up and down relationship with a mammoth. Sometimes bad, sometimes good, but always with lots of funny little moments, so I want to enjoy. So I'm going to start with the first story now. Sit back, enjoy, relax with a story. Chapter 1. Meet Grump. Mashed potatoes, why am I so ugly? Grump sighed and kicked a stone with his bare toe. Life was hard for a caveman during the Great Ice Age, so many thousands of years ago. None of the other Ice Age men were exactly pretty, but Grump was the strangest of all. His forehead was wrinkled like a rumpled bedclothes, and his nose was scrunched up as if he could smell something awful. No wonder the other cavemen enjoyed pointing out how ugly he was. Well, they don't like me. I don't like them, Grump muttered. He glared at the men who stood chatting in the misty sunlight. I can get along quite well alone. It was true. Grump had long ago grown tired of being teased and learned to keep to himself. He had picked a leaky, drafty cave to live in, far from the rest of his tribe. He fed himself, walked by himself, talked to himself, but mainly he grumbled. That was why he was called Grump. What shall I do this morning? No need to look for food. I still have some tasty fruit from yesterday. What can I do instead? That was the worst of living in the Ice Age. It could be so boring. And all those melting, dripping glaciers were enough to drive Grump crazy. Got to find something to do, Grump grumbled as he trudged up the hill above his cave. He was looking for mischief, and it wasn't long before he found it. Suddenly he spotted something far below, under the cliff. He peered over the edge. What a surprise, he chuckled. It's old hairy horns snoozing as usual. From a patch of sunlight at the foot of the cliff came a snoring noise. It was made by a huge creature sleeping in the warmth. Grump drew back hurriedly as the animal stirred. All right for him, he said. All he has to do is eat a bit and sleep a bit. Nobody ever bothers a mammoth. That's what the sleeping animal was, a large hairy mammoth. Herman was his name, and he was the happiest creature alive. Perhaps that was what annoyed Grump about him. He didn't seem fair that anyone should be so cheerful. And what an easy life he had compared to Grump. No grubbing for roots to eat or crouching in the cold to catch a coney rabbit. And there is Grump perched above the cliff looking down on Herman. <clears throat> Herman just browsed happily off the treetops or slept warm and snug in his homegrown fur coat. Thinks he's got everything, doesn't he? Grump complained, so pleased with himself. If only I could take him down a peg or two. But how? Bouncing boulders on Herman's head was useless. The mammoth would hardly notice. Grump needed something different. Suddenly he banged the earth in glee. Of course, he said. I'll dig a nice big pit for catching mammoths in. Let's see how he likes that. Grump turned and scampered down the hill to a spot near Herman, but out of sight. In a minute, he was hard at work, digging busily. Chink, chink, chink. Herman lifted his sleepy head. What was that noise nearby? What was going on? He couldn't see anything. Wait, something which looked like an odd old sack of paper topped with a turnip was flitting from rock to rock towards him. He recognised that figure of old. Grump was on the move again. Herman closed his eyes and pretended to sleep once more. Grump was nervous. He had dug his pit and covered it with giant ferns and dead branches. Now he had to make Herman chase him and fall into the pit. That would be hard, the hard part. He shivered and crept close to the snoring animal. Then he lifted one of the ears which lay in a great hairy flap over Herman's face. Silly old mammoth, he shouted. Your mother was a rug and your father was a hairy horse stand. Immediately he leapt away, terrified at what he'd done. But Herman didn't move. Not a stir, not a twitch. Suddenly an awful thought burst into Grump's brain. Was Herman sick or even worse? And just when he'd worked so hard digging a lovely trap, it was too much to bear. With a cry of fury, he jumped onto Herman's back and tugged at his furry coat. Wake up, bonehead! Wake up and chase me! That's where Grump made his mistake. The moment he was on Herman's back, the mammoth heaved to his feet with a toot of his triumph. He started running slowly at first and faster and faster. He meant no harm, of course. It was a game to him, but Grump was terrified. Over rocks, over rivers, Herman ran. He darted through herds of dozing dinosaurs, slid down glaciers, lumbered over the lumpy landscape, but at last even he began to tire. He headed back to the starting place. Then he saw Grump's pit. 
It was a really good pit, really good, deep with straight sides and the ferns hit it well, but Herman wasn't deceived. Just when he seemed sure to tumble in, he stopped suddenly. Grump sailed through the air, spinning like an acrobat, and landed on the ferns. He lay there for a second, then the ferns collapsed and he disappeared with a shout. Oh, ow! I'm shaken to shreds, Grump grumbled as he picked himself up. He found himself carefully. All his limbs seemed to be in place, just about. He looked up and saw Herman's big face staring down at him with interest over the edge of the pit. Don't look so smug, floppy ears, Grump bellowed and waved his fish. Just you wait until I get out of here. The question was, how could he get out? And there you can see Grump flying over the head of Herman into that pit that he'd made for Herman. <coughs> The pit was deep, very deep, big enough to hold the largest mammoth. How could a little caveman hope to escape? There was nothing to help him unless you counted a few broken branches and withered ferns. Grump groaned and sat down. He was convinced by now it was all Herman's fault. What a thing to do to a nice, harmless chap like me, he said. I'd like to take those ferns and tie them around his trunk and... He stopped speaking and his eyes widened. If he could tie something together with those old dry ferns, he could take those broken branches. With a cry, he jumped up and started to work. Herman, meanwhile, had retired to doze nearby him to watch the pit. After all, he wanted no harm to come to Grump. Life would be so boring without little caveman to liven things up. He watched with interest, and eventually he was rewarded. Two branches slowly poked up from the pit. pit rather. They jogged and waved for a moment, then rested against the side of the hole. Soon afterwards, there was a grunting noise, and Grump's face appeared above the ground. He looked about him like a surprised rabbit, but he didn't see Herman. Finally, he climbed out and turned to haul the branches up after him. They were joined side by side with ropes of twisted fern. Grump looked at them proudly. What a smart caveman I am, he said. Takes a brain to make something like this. Now, what shall I call it? What about, yes, what about calling it a ladder? Grump had reason to be pleased. With his ladder, he could do all sorts of things. Climb tall trees, get eggs from the topmost ledges, find a new cave so high up that no animal could reach him. And there he is, coming out of the pit he dug at the top of his ladder. What a clever caveman. <clears throat> I can even hide from that great furry Herman, Grump smirked. Not that I'm scared of him. If he were here now, I'd tie a knot in his trunk. Grump shouldn't have said that. As he did so, Herman blew a bellow that set Grump's ears ringing. He didn't stop to hear another one. He seized his ladder and ran away so quickly that his legs seemed to vanish in a haze. Mammoths don't often laugh, yet anyone watching Herman would have said that's just what he was doing. His mighty shoulders shook and his trunk swung like a pendulum from side to side. He watched Grump until he was out of sight. Then, with the last toot of his trunk, Herman settled down once more to doze in the sunshine. So, that's the end of the first story. Grump has invented the ladder. If you wondered where ladders came from, well, now you have your answer. It was that caveman thousands of years ago, trapped in a pit, using his ingenuity. So, I hope you've been creative today and done something wonderful with your time. Best wishes to you all, and tune in soon for chapter two, which is called Grump in the Swim. Bye for now.